Okay, so yeah, so just in in a couple of minutes, we're going to have Louise to go through her um, her talk about defining evaluation. Louise has had uh, about twenty years' experience in in this area and has just taken on a really interesting role at uh, the University of Leeds. Um, they're based in the UK. For anybody that's not familiar with University of Leeds, they've had a long and very prominent history of their use of learning technology and have been quite uh, influential and innovative in this area. So this is quite an interesting role, but I'm sure Louise is going to tell you a little bit more. I'm just here to represent ELISIG, which is a, a community of researchers and practitioners. And uh, we're, we're here to try and build up practice and knowledge and a community around this area of evaluation, of particularly of the student experience of using technology. So if you enjoyed this little um, talk that we're going to uh, uh, give to you. Um, hopefully you might join us on our JISC mail uh, list there, or you can keep a little eye on the LESIG events where we'll be doing more of these types of things. And we are launching our LESIG scholar scheme as well, which you'll find on the alt list. I'll share it in the uh, chat in a minute where you can find out about how we're supporting a a community of, of uh, early starters in this area. Um, Louise, do you want to take over and pop your slides up? Sure. Yep. Um, do I just, are my slides? Oh, hang on. Let me... uh, they are, let me. Do I just need to share my screen? No, no. Here you go. I can't see where they are. It's okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so, can so I just check, you... just bit, Louise, just mm. before we start, because sometimes these things work in different ways. Uh, can you move the slides forward? Just one. Yeah, you've got yeah. control. Okay. I shall yeah. relax now <laughs> and just hand over to you, Louise. Thank you ever so much for giving up your time this afternoon, and take it away. No problem. Okie dokie. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. It's really lovely to be here and share my ideas and I'll be interested to see um, if there are any questions and hear about what um, others are doing in this area as well. Um, so as Jim said, I'm reasonably new to the University of Leeds. I joined back in January in this really exciting role um, of uh, manager for innovation and evaluation, um, which is it basically enables me to really specialise within the wider DES team on, on how we're evaluating and then using that to develop an innovation programme. So in, I wanted to just do a sort of, I didn't want to make this into a sort of death by PowerPoint, but I just wanted to take you through a few key areas um, about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, so that we can then um, leave some time for discussion. So I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an overview about the Digital Education Service at Leeds, um, talk a bit about how we define evaluation and why we feel we need to evaluate and why we feel this de the definition of evaluation and why we need to do it is actually moving beyond the more straightforward definition that we tend to think of um, with evaluation. Um, also, I wanted to touch on what opportunities come up um, as a result of a more intentional and strategic evaluation plan. Um, and then just a quick look at our plan at Leeds. So looking at a bit what my team are doing, the underpinning principles we're using in our programme of work and our team structure. Um, and then I'll leave a little bit of time for questions at the end. So in terms of DES at Leeds, so the Digital Education Service at Leeds is actually pretty large compared to some of the other universities I've spoken to. 
Um, it's grown very quickly since COVID. I think um, not long before COVID, there was a team of five. We're now over 100 and still growing. Um, and we're supporting faculties throughout the university as well as a growing fully online plan of online masters and professional and external partner um, partnership programs and projects that we have. So our teams are broken down to a fully online learning team of learning designers. We've got student support for the online um, master's programs. We've got a blended learning team that serves our different faculties. We've got a specialist professional learning team that looks at some of the CPD programs we develop around our degree courses. Um, we've got a systems team that support um, online as well as campus learners. Uh, we've got a production and creative team, which is really growing at the moment, um, and we're developing skills in immersive um, and VR um, resources and courses. Uh, we've got an engagement and comms team, and we've got my evaluation and innovation team, which sort of straddles work across all of the teams, supporting them and evaluating. We've recently um, developed a Helix team. We've recently launched a new facility called Helix, which is um, a an area where we've able to try hold evaluation events but also then use that to trial and pilot things such as VR, um, there's um, studios and all sorts for us to encourage innovation across the university so we encourage um, academics and uh, students alike to come and use this um, and then we've got an operations team which just um, looks after all of the teams so they've got their work cut out. So in terms of what is evaluation um, for us at Leeds, so we use it as um, we see it as an understanding of our user base and how they interact with our programmes and services. We see it as an opportunity for continuous learning and improvement, uh, as well as innovation and increasing user success. And I think that's probably the one most people resonate with in terms of evaluating programmes evaluating courses, evaluating specific tools that you're using. Um, we also use it for evaluation, evaluation for a mechanism of identifying what went right so that we can then look for opportunities to use these approaches and tools again. So we identify, define and celebrate um, stories where we've seen real impact or real success. Um, we also see evaluation as understanding activity in the wider field um, and sharing best practice. So having an awareness of what best practice looks like for us, what else is going on in the sector and what other people are doing so that we can share and improve that way. Um, and evaluation is also understanding that the space we work in um, is, I'm going to just add up here, I think, if I remember correctly, um, that the space we work in is continually changing. Um, so the HE sector and the landscape is continually changing. So we need to ensure that we're continually evaluating that the space that we're creating our resources and courses and that our understanding of who our user profiles are is up to date and making sure that that's a continual exercise, not something that we just do at the end of a certain time frame, like the end of a year or an end of a course. So why do we need to evaluate? So external factors, the HE landscape and our user base are shifting um, and the HE market space is shifting. So I suppose in those two points, it's that sort of more than ever before, we've got students that people are continually using phrases like customer experience, consumer experience, because we have students um, paying a lot of money to come to do their courses and student expectations are high. So we've got a little bit of a shift in terms of how we're treating our students and we're seeing it a lot more as a, as a learner experience from start to end rather than sort of silos of modules or silos of, of tools. It's about how we package the whole learner experience and how we resource that. So that needs to be looked at and evaluated sort of from the, from the um, with an understanding of those expectations and, and the space that we're in and how competitive that's come. Um, knowledge is power. So actually understanding, understanding what other people are doing, understanding what other organisations that are moving into the HE space that aren't necessarily institutions are doing so that we can just understand and how we compare and how we can continually improve. 
Um, and also the HE space is continually looking to fully online programs and overlapping with the professional space, which is quite a complex and already firmly established space. So being able to evaluate with that in mind through that lens and understanding those spaces as well so that we can factor all that into how we create our services. Internal factors, probably something that will resonate with everybody here. Um, the need to cultivate a detailed knowledge and understanding of our user base and our product or course portfolio to enable organic innovation. There's a lot of talk about the need to integrate certain technologies, especially digital technologies and AI, but it's making sure that we use these um, as a result of proper evaluation, proper understanding of where they can be used best and, and more organically. Um, also to identify and address any misconceptions, I quite often see where we have evaluations that don't really come in until the end of a program, so evaluation hasn't taken place earlier. Quite often there'll be a misconception that's established after the event that could have been um, identified, worked with and resolved earlier on if we'd sort of made our evaluation process more circular and embedded it at the start. Um, to use knowledge and insight to review existing courses, resources and inform design of future ones. So insights that we get um, that can then feed into to general course and tool decision making. And to influ influence key strategic decision making when multiple stakeholders are involved. So in universities, I'm sure you will know, you're, you get involved in projects where you have multiple stakeholders with um, ideas, maybe of what they think that their students need or what they what they feel a faculty needs, but another faculty might need something different. I often find that using our evaluation at all stages of a project really helps um, actually identify what we feel we think we need from what we actually do need. So it's a really useful tool in that regard. Um, and I can't remember what that bottom bullet was that I can't see, so apologies for that. Um, so, the hope here at Leeds is that evaluation activities will offer insights and guidance to relevant functions as needed at all points of the content creation cycle. So, this is about it being not something we just do at the end, it's something that we embed at the start and it becomes part of our BAU as we collaborate with the different functions, whether that be the course designers, whether that be the launching on the platforms and then obviously supporting the deliverers, whether that's the academics or whether it's digital um, education support staff that we have within DES. Um, and to do this, the evaluation of our courses, our resources, our tools against user needs is central and that needs to happen early on to ensure we understand our user base and their changing needs so we can meet them where they are and factor these into our solutions as well as um, identifying opportunities to innovate at an early stage. Um, it's to establish the needs from the wants especially where budgets are tight um, and also to ensure that we use digital technology, not just for its sake, but for where it can make a real meaningful difference. Um, and to make sure that it's really not just at the end, it's not just an afterthought. So that's the why. How does, um, how does our evaluation and innovation team plan to do this? So it's collaboration really and partnership is at the center of how we're working. Um, we obviously work and feed into helping evaluation across all the different functions. So we help the um, instructional design team evaluate their courses from that perspective. We help the systems team um, assess how systems are being used and to inform decisions around what systems to procure or which ones to renew. Um, and we also help with um, all of our other teams around blended in faculty around how they can help evaluate how support is being used or the tools or the, the course evaluations are taking place to support the academics as well as the learners. So in partnership, but we have established a few key principles and frameworks um, to keep us grounded as a team, but also to ensure that we're taking a consistent approach. So our activities, um, developing a thorough understanding of all our categories of users, so whether that's 
campus, whether that's fully online, whether it's professional course users, whether it's users using systems, um, using quantitative and qualitative me methods. Um, we are we already have and we're continually developing data insights dashboards and benchmark stats to inform a range of different strategic decisions at all stages of the product experience lifespan. So it's something people can come to retrospectively if they're starting a new project and they want to get um, data and insights on something specifically to help inform design, but also it's something that we do at the end as well so that we can get the actual versus the kind of we can use benchmark data and odd data but then we can get the actual on products at the end and then see how they fare against um, other projects and then we update the dashboard continually so that it's continually growing with our products and as our users change uh, we offer design-based market insights and recommendations to it, help inform solution design. So this is evaluation, which is probably slightly outside the parameters of normal evaluation. But this is just looking at when we look at our solution design, we obviously look at our users, but we also look at what other um, people that are working in this area have developed, what other courses, what design values do other courses have? Is there anything we can learn and bring to it? And um, so my team does this kind of work early on before um, our learning design team finalize their design so that we can just give them a bit of a summary and an overview so that they can sort of they can take it or leave it ultimately but it's just making sure that they're informed um, we use our baseline data knowledge to develop and implement an innovation plan so at the moment this is very much a work in pro progress so alongside evaluating specific programs so we have fully online online masters for example that we evaluate each year but alongside that we're starting to embed continual evaluation program events so where we give our learners the opportunity to attend feedback sessions so that we're continually doing qualitative and quantitative analysis to feed into our data dashboards um, so that we can then start identifying patterns to feed into a meaningful innovation in terms of where do we put our money for specific digital technologies where would it be most meaningful and most impactful to try x y or z um, and we also support and facilitate ownership of these activities within different work functions so my team at the moment is quite small so we can't obviously do all of this for everyone but what we're also trying to do is to empower and facilitate leads within other functions to actually train them up to some degree and support them to do some of this activity themselves and then we support at the coding end obviously i've got a team of coders um, that can actually work with the data if they want to start gathering more on a routine basis themselves so in a nutshell our mission statement um, is that we very much hope to encourage facilitate champion and support the development of a new way of working which embeds valuation at the very start of the workflow thereby prompting activities to cultivate a thorough understanding and appraisal of our users inform our design and to create a clear benchmark against which a deeper and more insightful evaluation process can be carried out and from which opportunities to innovate will hopefully surface organically. Um, and where I talk about the clear benchmark against which a deeper and more insightful evaluation can, process can be carried out, I think this is really important. Um, when I first joined, we, we had access to stats. We had lots of stats on you know, uh, completion rates. But without that real understanding benchmark stats and baseline stats and an understanding of our users, it's really limited what you can deduce from that and, and how meaningful it is. So putting that groundwork in and continually working on that baseline in the background actually enables you to, to draw more meaning and more insights from the data that you get when you then come to do an end of program evaluation. Values that underpin our approach, um, qualitative and quantitative, and that's really important. Holistic, so obviously um, evaluating from a pedagogical um, perspective is central to everything we do, but we need to ensure that we are taking into um, consideration all elements that might be affecting or driving or motivating or not motivating our learners and their ability to progress. Um, neutral, so making sure that we come to all projects neutral without any assumptions, uh, sometimes easier than said than done, but we have to check ourselves to make sure that we always are open 
Um, and, and I also find that even though we're the digital education service and our focus is on digital, trying to leave that word out is really important in not leading, especially in feedback groups where we're trying to get uh, focus groups where we're trying to get feedback, dropping the word digital to just make sure that we're not leading them down that focus on the digital side of things will we'll hopefully get a more organic um, picture of what the ideal scenario looks like rather than and then working out what the best digital solutions are rather than trying to kind of shoehorn digital in when where maybe actually it might need to be a light touch from the digital perspective um, learner experience learner gap and user analysis led that's embedded in all our qualitative activities activities to ensure that we get data that allows our data team to carry out diagnostic, descriptive, prescriptive predict and predictive analytics. We've developed a data dimensions framework whereby we've got um, different uh, categories of data that we want about our users across the board so that we ensure that we're creating the, the same types of data for all of our programs. And this is for our university. We don't use this for external partnerships because that's a slightly different market and a slightly different relationship. But for all our campus and online degree learners, we use the same di data dimensions because that then allows us to do analysis across programs as well. Um, Cross-functional working, as I've said, it's always in partnership with the different functions and we seek to empower and encourage everybody to be able to take part um, in this type of activity and make it more of a kind of culture and mindset within the service and within the university and of course an experimental mindset as well being open um, and making sure that we can then be experimental with our innovations once we have that um, foundation of knowledge from our data um, very quickly, in terms of how it translates to a programme of work for, uh, um, for us, I've done a review of my team's processes um, to make sure that we are better organised to facilitate type, this type of um, work. We are limited in capacity, so we have to identify priority areas each year at the moment. We've, we're juggling business as usual external partner activity um, for which we're defining our external evaluation offer. Um, as well as supporting our internal teams and the, and the university faculties. Um, we're prioritising supporting our fully online um, master's programmes and evaluating those at the end of each year. Um, and we've been reorganising our data dashboards to enable us to basically scale up. It's the only way to do it. Um, baseline of benchmark activities taking place, as is um, workshops and um, consults and advising. Um, and we're also supporting the scholarship and innovation activity to make sure that where we've got pockets of evaluation going on with different teams, which we do, we, um, we've got various, uh, we've got various data faculties within the university, and we've got the, the, the skills and other um, functions in the team that are able to do dashboards activity, but it's making sure that we harness that and bring it all into the central dashboard. Otherwise, we're finding that we've got all this useful information. And we've got dashboards here in different places, but unless we have them all together, they're getting missed and we're also not able to do the comparisons that we need to across the board. So it's really ensure, it's really important that we ensure that we close the loop on all activity that's going on so that it can be harnessed. Um, my team is organized um, into two um, main teams. I've got an analytics and quantitative team who are my data whizzes. Um, so they do a lot of the data analysis and the coding. And then I've got a qualitative team um, who do the qualitative evaluations um, and also lead on the innovation activities as well. But as I've said, we're quite small at the moment. So the, we do plan to grow, um, but for the moment we are working with a small team and we are currently recruiting and sort of training up innovation and analytics champions within different functions and different faculties where people have a real interest and passion for it. We are then helping to sort of help support them and, and give them the skills and the background that they need to start doing this activity themselves. Um, so, uh, Jim said that he thought it'd be really useful for me to give a few tips for meaning of, meaningful evaluation. So just thinking about some of the things I've discussed, um, I'd say my key tips are don't just do it at the end. This can be very limited. Um, think carefully about the data categories that you want to capture and why. So I would say really if you 
people tend to come to us with questions that they want answering and you need to step back from that and go right what data do I need to really be able to holistically answer this question and what question might that then lead on to so it's about making sure that all the data points you're capturing will really answer all the questions that you've got this one's really important ensuring you have baseline and benchmark data to work with now you won't have that to start with and that's okay but it's just making sure that you've got it in mind and you start trying to kind of establish what that might be and gathering it slowly um, never assume anything always be neutral uh, to repeat here, so apologies, establish key data categories to use across the board. Um, think qualitative and quantitative. When I first joined, we had a bit of an imbalance there and most of our analysis was quantitative. So we're really ramping up our qualitative um, activities. Um, I would say where possible, embed it as part of your standard processes um, so that it's part of your content creation and culture and mindset. And work in partnerships with wider teams and academics. Silos don't work. Um, so that's my quick overview. Um, thank you for listening. And um, I'd be really interested to hear if anyone's got any questions or comments or feedback on how they do things um, at different universities. Um, Jed Keenan. <laughs>